what if you could have most of the diagnostic capabilities of the T8 and T10 in a smaller form factor, dispense with a lot of the frills, and hit a much more affordable price point? That's what we're checking out today with the Icon T7 Wired Diagnostic Tablet Scanner. Let's dig into it together right now. Hey everyone, this is Tom with Fresh Vintage Garage and uh, we're just going to walk and talk and dig right into this while we're talking here. If you've not seen our video on the T10 and T8, definitely check them out because there's a few comparisons between these and the T7 and uh, we also have individual videos. Boy, I'm making a mess of this box, I apologize. We have individual videos on each one and uh, this represents the third uh, unit in the, the line here. This is small in stature, but it's definitely big on power. And as I dig this out of the box here, I'll make note that this is a wired unit. And looking at this, this specifically is wired diagnostic tablet scanner. I make that note because these two are Bluetooth. And I don't want to get into many more uh, specifics or details simply because there's so much to unpack on these two. Definitely check our videos out if you haven't seen the T8 and T10 video, but this is the actual T7 here. Let me get it out of the plastic. And you can see there's not much in the actual box. There's the actual cable. There's a uh, standard power brick. And I'm not seeing, that's weird. Let me actually, I thought it would come in the case. Okay, my bad, so the case is right here. I thought the case, this would be in a case, but uh, it's actually packed separately. So let's see if there's anything in here. Okay, so we do have a actual you know, piece of paper, just quick start. And then here is our charging cable. So it's nice to see. I'll just leave this down here on the floor. Okay, let's fire this thing up and take a look. So feeling it right off the bat, it feels very quality, very premium, just like these two guys. And uh, I won't do too much comparison because, again, if you haven't seen the comparison videos on these two and where you have a comparison video on all three on which one you should buy, definitely check out those videos in addition to the T8 and T10 videos. All that to say, this is, uh, this is the small stature, but it does a lot of the features, bi-directional control, code reading, live data graphing, has FCA auto auth, and a whole host of other features, oil light resets and stuff like that. Let me throw this down on the, uh, the ground here. Looking at some tech specs, it's a seven inch screen. And once you, once you figure that out, T7, T8, eight inch, and so on and so forth. So I believe it has a 1.5 gigahertz processor. A little bit less RAM, these have four, this has three and so on and so forth. So nice unit overall. I do kind of appreciate that the buttons are here, very clicky buttons. Those feel very solid, especially if you're wearing like greasy gloves or something. And here's our actual home screen. I'm just looking at the, uh, there's our icon on the home screen. Just to touch, just to call it out, I think this is Android 10, but we're actually going to look at the software a little bit closer and figure out if it's Android 10. It might be an Android 9 or something like that. But uh, overall, I mean, it feels, you know, feels solid. This is the stylus and that's kind of a standard feature on all three of these i do not see a camera i do see a speaker but i do not see a camera these guys have cameras obviously but uh, let's take a look in the software here just a quick mention there is no true fix software on this i think we're going to try and find a workaround to that it's a pretty easy workaround but um, no true fix out of the box whereas you have that as an option over here Let's go ahead, and uh, there's not much more to talk about here. Let's jump jump outside, and we're going to do a few things. We're going to obviously do some code reading. Let's see if our check engine light's on. Live data graphing. We want to dig into the software and see how far we can get with the diagnostics. We have a Subaru Forester. We do not have a uh, an actual Chrysler product, so we, we can't really test the FCA auto auth. But we're going to dig into the Subaru's computer, see what all we can find, what all we can do with this, and see how much of the actual software from these two guys, the big guys, are actually living inside this unit. So let's jump outside and go do that right now. So we're here in our 2016 Subaru Forester, and just wanted to quickly mention, this has one-year warranty, one-year software updates included out of the box, and it also is running Android 10. We weren't sure, so we dug into the software and we found that out. Uh, let me go ahead and set this down. And I just want to mention, for curiosity's sake, 
we went ahead and grabbed this out of the T8. This is the uh, Bluetooth VCI dongle from the T8. Uh, this allows the T8 and the T10 to communicate with the car wirelessly. We thought it would work. Uh, we tried it. it. It just wouldn't work. We This is Bluetooth on the actual T7, but we don't believe that the uh, connectivity and the software to drive these and communicate is there. So but just give that a try. Hey, if it works for you in the future, leave us a comment and let us know. All that to say, we have the T7 here. You can see it's actually hooked in with the wire that comes with the unit. So what we're gonna do now is screen record on the actual T7 and we're gonna throw it on the screen and then dig into the software and show you all the features. Okay, so here's our actual diagnostics home screen. Uh, this is very similar to the T10 and the T8. Uh, we're going to go right into diagnostics. If you want to see any of this other stuff, definitely stick around later in the video because we have records, TPMS info, updates, and toolbox and stuff. Well, I'm going to click the diagnostics button, and we have a 2016 Subaru Forester here. So I'm just going to scroll on down here to Subaru. I think I already, oh, nope, nope, it's right there. There we go. And being this is a wired connection, it's a pretty fast communication to the actual T7 to Subaru. There we go. So let's do area select and uh, nine pin. Now let's do area select. There we go. North America. And we'll hit yes. Okay, so let's just dive right into this. Let's do an all system code scan. I'll just shout out that if you wanted to do a system selection and break down individual parts of the computers, you know, each individual computer in the vehicle, you could do that. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and do all system code scan. And while this scans, I just apologize for the noise. It is raining out, and there was a thunderstorm that just went through as we were starting to record this. So, But we'll let this go. We'll actually speed this part up. All right, that actually didn't take that long at all. So we have modules with trouble code, module without trouble code. Let me touch on that, quantity five. So those are good. So we have the EOBD engine transmission da 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 and then let's see here emissions information so that looks good let's go back to these trouble codes here brake control let's actually hit the uh, trouble codes too so we have u0073 let's click on the repair info just to, to shout out the actual t7 does not have truefix software if you've not seen harbor freights the icon truefix software definitely check it out it's a really nice software and for the price point you get a lot of functionality a lot of wiring diagrams and schematics and stuff we'll leave the link for that video we made on that in the description of the video you're watching now but this here just gives you basic web search and guided help so i'm going to uh, we do not have this hooked up to wi-fi right now so i'm just going to do guided help let's see what this says okay so it says not support so Keep that in mind. We did update the software in this right now. It just says um, you're, you know, you have a trouble code here. It doesn't actually give you any details on repair info. So if you did web search, I'm guessing that'll take you to, yeah, the generic browser that's built into here. So let's look through here. What do we have? Multi-function display. Let's see what this says. So that is a can counter. It's abnormal. And again, that's a pending code. So Let's click repair info. Okay, so you see web search, guided help. And if we wanted to clear a data trouble codes, obviously down in the bottom right corner, we could do that. Let's look at the engine EGI here. Let's see, can we actually touch this? Okay, so we're gonna communicate with the engine here and let's see what comes up. Okay, so let's, if I click read trouble code, let's see what we have. Okay, so we have uh, no check engine light, uh, no code. The, the check engine light in the Subaru is actually not on here. So. so let's take a look at some data streaming here. We have read data stream. We'll dive right into this. And you can see these are the different options. And the car isn't on. I'll turn the car on now. So you can see the numbers changing as I scroll through here. And you can combine this data into a graph with up to four. So if you wanted to, you could just choose a few of these and then hit combine and it'll show you the actual graph. And also if you wanted to actually record and generate a report, you can do so. It'll actually show you the data and allow you to maybe present that to a customer. 
This is a great way to chase like a, a random electrical gremlin or some kind of sensor that's starting to go bad, but not 100% of the time. It's a great way to actually chase that stuff. Uh, real quick, we see actuation test, and we were doing a little bit of uh, tinkering off camera. I'm going to turn the car off and go right back to ignition quickly here. There we go. So we were looking off camera. There's radiator fan relay. There's also uh, the ELCM pump and so on and so forth in here. We were trying to find the windows, and then we actually realized, I'm going to cl keep clicking back here. Let me get out of here, and I want to get back to the system selection and then we're going to go into the body control because this is kind of neat to see. And we'll throw this part up on the screen. You actually see the video. Uh, we're going to do the actuation test. Now we're in the body control module, so to speak. So we have a couple different options in here. Here is the horn output. So you can see on the screen, forgive the lighting. It's, it got dark out really quick. But you can see the uh, horn. I'm not touching the horn. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit start here real quick. And then I'm going to try to turn the horn off as quick as I can. There we go. And let's back out of here. And so over here we have our door lock and I'm just gonna preemptively unlock the door just to make sure. Here's our lock actuator test. So we're gonna do without monitoring data and I'm just gonna stop talking. Okay, and our doors are locked and I'll do it one more time. You'll hear them click. So they are actually locked now. And, oh, I gotta press stop. Let me hit stop there. So really cool to see the options in here. Let's try one more. Let's find what is in here. Let's look at transmission. Let's see if there's any actual bi-directional control, so to speak, in the transmission. All right, so we actually have pretty nice mixture of things here being a Subaru. It has an all-wheel drive solenoid. I'm not going to go in here and click anything and then tear up Jay's transmission. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, so let's shift gears. I'm going to go back to the engine. Let's go to the special functions. A lot of times these are the uh, actual oil light reset, uh, electronic parking brake, and so on and so far, uh, so forth. Certain uh, you know, certain scan tools will have a diesel particulate filter type uh, reset and stuff. So in here I see oil change reset. Now that's without tool. So that, I wonder if this is the manual procedure. Yeah, so as you see on the screen here, this is the oil change reset without tool. So basically this is telling you the manual process from Subaru to allow you to turn off that uh, like service soon or take it into the dealership light uh, on my CRV. I call it my dummy light because it gets you to the dealer kind of thing. Um, Let's look out, I'll look around in here. So I see special mode. Let's see what's in here. And there's really not, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, if you're, you know, looking for that, that is in the actual software here. Let me click back. And I want to go back to a different control unit. Let's go back into the body control. I want to see what kind of special functions are in here. Okay, so we have keyless ID registration, initial key setting, and security settings. So a lot of different odds and ends in here. And let me try one more, because I want to try and find the... Okay, so we have brake control. Let's see if there's any special functions in here, like maybe parking, parking brake reset. So we have ABS sequence control module. We have the viscous differential coupling check mode in here. Now, I do see brake air bleeding. I'm still not seeing electronic parking brake, which is interesting, but I'm going to try one more thing just to see what else is in here. And let's try the power rear gate. Let's see what is in here. Communication air vehicle is here. Da, da, da. Okay, so we'll just leave that alone. And let's look at the tire pressure monitor TPM system here. Now this did have TPMS. We're going to click on that here very shortly. Um, so let's let's take a look at special function. So transmission ID registration. All right. So there are actual IDs for our TPMS sensors. And here we go. And let's get back out of here. Let's go back to the home screen. I'm just going to start this over. 
and let me exit out of here. Exit, there we go. And we go all the way back out here. So smog and OBD2, this is obviously your emissions and kind of a condensed version of the diagnostics. Uh, you have, um, you know, your emissions, your IM readiness, and your OBD2 only reading. You see it's automatically connecting with the car, getting the right protocol. There's our uh, Subaru Forester. So let's do our read IM readiness. Uh, ready status. Let's go ahead and see what we have in here. Okay, so everything here seems okay. You see some things. This is heated. Catalyst monitor is not supported. And you have the engine control. So nice to see if you, you know, say you're in uh, like California, for example, that you have emissions and it's a big thing. Um, it's definitely nice to have that. And if you wanted to read trouble codes, let's just jump in here. We'll read some trouble codes. Obviously, this does not have the check engine light on. And let's get out of here and let me end my diagnostic session. Okay, so records is just like it sounds. This is where if you made a report or you actually had some kind of PDF that you generated that you wanted to send to the customer, that's where a lot of this would, would actually live. And TPMS info, let's take a look here. So let's find the Subaru. Now, I will mention this is a uh, 2016 Subaru Forester, and these are all manual relearn procedures. There's not any type of... Uh, TPMS sensor capability like uh, a Bartek scan tool or an Autofix scan tool or an Autel scan, uh, an actual TPMS tool, so to speak. These are the manual reset functions that you see here. And uh, every car is different kind of thing. Every uh, manufacturer OEM is different. So in this case, we have to drive the car about 30 miles an hour for at least 10 minutes. So uh, at least you have that as an option in here if you're a shop trying to get a uh, an actual TPMS low tire pressure light off the dash kind of thing. So. And we just wanted to touch on a few other odds and ends here. So we have settings and nothing really major in here. This is where you do a lot of your software updates, firmware fix. I will say if you buy one of these, definitely go into the software updates and firmware fix. Give this thing a restart. Get it uh, all the firmware updated. Ours actually updated the firmware twice out of the box. But now it seems to be 100% working, and uh, you know if you have all your odds and ends and settings, this is where you're going to go for it. Uh, looking at the toolbox here, we did want to call this out. There's a lot of basic information in here, the calculator, and then if you did have images, this does not have a camera on it, so I'll call that out. If you had images for some reason, maybe you took a screen recording or you uh, took a screenshot or something of, of like diagnostic data, that's where this would be found. And then repair information in here is actually just like it sounds. This is a couple uh, links. I will make note, these are not um, actual Identifix software. It's not auto data that's on the T7. These are all web links. And let me just touch the Identifix here just to show you. So here is our Identifix loading. It's, it's just loading the Identifix website, identifix.com. I'm going to click back because I want to show you the Harbor Freight website and think of this as a workaround for Truefix. This does not come with Truefix software. It doesn't have Truefix data or repair data on it. But all you have to do is just go to the actual web browser and then log into your... We're not going to do it. We're not going to log into the Truefix software, but just uh, sign into your Truefix account. And in theory, you have a workaround to put Truefix on the T7. So... Nice feature to have there uh, if you're looking to have a Truefix actual subscription and use it on your T7. So wrapping up the video here, we actually came back downstairs because it got dark pretty quickly outside. Um, you know, the T7, I like it. It's a, uh, you know, essentials kind of thing. It's the core scan tool. It's everything you need. And if you're a heavy DIYer, maybe you're a second shop owner, nothing that you don't kind of thing. Uh, if you haven't seen our videos on the T8 and T10, we have two fantastic videos on these. If you're looking for this, but maybe you want some T8, uh, the bigger screen, if you want a Truefix software out of the box, the capability for the Truefix software and the actual Identifix data out of the box, the T8 might be, be for you. If you need an actual uh, wireless battery tester, you need a larger screen, bigger battery, and an actual uh, video camera right out of the box and Identifix data and Truefix software. Uh, maybe the T10 is the right one for you. 
definitely check out the video on the T8 and T10. And we also have comparisons on these two and all three to really just kind of break down and talk our personal experiences on which one we like, what we like about this, what we doesn't, we do not like about that. We'll leave all those videos in the links form in the description of the video you're watching now. Uh, one other quick note I just wanted to mention, you know, the T8, T10, you do get like a hard shell, like blown plastic case. This is a, you know, more DIY level, you know, soft shell case, so to speak, that comes with the T7. It's not a bad case. It actually feels really nice in the hands, but all that to say, uh, leave us a comment. Which one are you thinking about buying? Uh, would you buy one of these? Uh, which, you know, what features are you looking for in an actual scan tool? Do you need Truefix software? If you haven't seen our Truefix software vi uh, video, definitely check that out. Really, really cool to see what Harbor Freight's doing with the price point and the, subs the annual subscription that they're offering. Leave us a comment. Which one would you buy? Do you like the T7 and just the core essentials? Do you need the actual Truefix and Identifix uh, data and software and subscription package that you find in the T8? Or do maybe you need your shop owner and you're looking for the video camera and the wireless battery testing capability of the T10 plus the Truefix software? Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Leave us a question. We have connections with uh, the actual Icon team, the Harbor Freight team. If you have a question about, hey, your make model this or your make model that, will it do this, will it do that? Leave us a comment. We, uh, once in a while, we'll throw them in an email and we'll actually send them to the team and they reply to us. So uh, we appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please definitely shoot us a comment. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from our Fresh Vintage family. And uh, with that, if you like sh scan tools, if you like shop equipment, if you like keeping your car certified fresh and on the road, Fresh Finish Garage, your channel, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.